Okay. I'm Howard Jackson from Open Door Multimedia and this afternoon I'm talking to Dan Sumner who's an apprentice and quite an old apprentice uh, and he'll tell us what he's doing. So go on Dan, what's happening? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm apprentice to George Reid who we've been working with today, um, who I met a couple of years ago. I've been um, moving into, gradually moving into woodland management over the past five or ten years. Yeah. I've been working outside doing conservation based work for 20, 25 years now. And <clears throat> I started managing a small piece of woodland for the National Trust. And I was bur burning charcoal and firewood in, getting a bit of timber out. And I was working a, a piece, piece of ancient semi-natural woodland and did, basically didn't want machinery in there, making a mess. Mm -hmm. And I made a few inquiries and someone gave me George's name um, we did a couple of days and on George, George's suggestion he said why don't you get in touch with the British horse loggers and do an apprenticeship which made me smile yeah. at the age of 44 mm -hmm. um, but he said no you know go for it George is he's one of the oldest if not the old, oldest horse logger certainly still working mm -hmm. professionally full time um, so you know, we uh, plugged away, we applied. Um, it's taken us a while to get a bit of funding, and thankfully, the RDPE have uh, helped us very quickly. RDPE, kindly. tell us RDPE what RDPE yeah. is uh, the Rural Development Plan for England, which right. is um, money that has been set aside for people um, setting up small businesses in rural locations right. that isn't aside from ag agriculture. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, and what's uh, a normal working day for you then if that's not a silly question with George yeah uh, we'll roll up maybe between eight half past eight um, take the horses out of the box give them a bit to eat yeah tack them up have a cup of tea George will have a cigarette or two and then we'll do an hour um, currently we've got a big job that we started near Hawkshead that's a big thinning project in some uh, um, forestry plantation that used to belong to the Forestry Commission and a local hotel has invested in a wood chip boiler Right. that they are uh, managing 60 acres of woodland to provide fuel and obviously eventually sell the timber for income mm -hmm. which is great, George says it, it's, it's um, like what George calls a model horse logging job um, mm -hmm. which should last between three and five years so hopefully as I finish right of my apprenticeship I should slide into the work right and how long is your apprenticeship the apprenticeship scheme is supposed to be three years right but because of my previous experience in woodland management forestry they've uh, compressed it into two years right and which what examining board or assessment board is it it's a Santis. right um, Orton College network um, I couldn't tell you what level it is off the top of my head um, but they it's um, well obviously it's a practically based yep. scheme uh, for the vast majority of it will just be working with George yep. learning how to handle the horses learning how to manage woodlands and forestry and then there are certain mandatory courses that I have to pass yep. um, chainsaw which I already have yep. um, woodland management courses ecology um, veterinary care for horses, right. etc. First aid. And I think it's a it's quite a good it's a rounded package, and the aim is that at the end of the two or three years, you'll be able to set yourself up as a small woodland management company using horses. Right. And did you have any experience of working with horses prior to this? Very little. Right. It's something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. My grandfather used to work railway horses. Right. Um, so my early members of him sitting in front of the racing, horse racing and telling me tales of pulling the cotton wagons Brilliant. from the rail heads yeah. to the factories. Well, my um, dad worked on the railway and he never mentioned any horses. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, he, he died when I was very, very young. Yeah. And I think uh, Grandad moved, quite rapidly moved onto the wagons when he was a young man, but his, his first work was with the horses. Okay. And I've so had an interest ever since, but, and I, I really, I never... It was just a bit of a dream, really. 
Mm -hmm. I've always been interested in working horses, but thought, even when I met George, I thought, well, he's this old pro and he might be, maybe he'll let me put the chains on and off or, or something like that. But his, his first words were, um, get your hand on the horse, Dan. You'll never learn anything looking it over a gate. Right. <laughs> and uh, off I set down the hill and fell over and got banged into a tree and, and just stuck at it, really. Right. So, and what I've, what, what I've seen today is that you're very involved in uh, explaining and teaching to people. Mm -hmm. So is that a side that you'd like to develop? It is, yeah. I, most of my work over the years has been dry stone walling, and I took a instructor training course with the Dry Stone Walling Association a few years ago. Yeah. And a colleague used to run dry stone walling courses, so I'm quite familiar with teaching people, showing it, and I quite enjoy it. Uh huh. And it's actually um, a requirement of my funding from both the RDPE and the National Park that I undertake some training. Right. So when I, when I heard that George had been approached to do these courses, I thought, fantastic. Right, so you're not only learning through your apprenticeship, you're actually delivering training to other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blind leading the blind, isn't it? Brilliant. Well, great talking to you. It's been a great day today. I really enjoyed yeah. it. And yeah. uh, I hope you go from strength to strength. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great.